Hi, this is Dylan Mars Greenberg. You're watching the online live premiere of the SALT documentary. I uh, co-created it and directed it, and it's brought to you by HX Records. wildest dream that you've ever had? Wildest dream as in a dream what it would like to actually happen or wildest dream a real dream in my head at night. Why don't you tell me why don't you tell me the one that you prefer? My wildest dream for the band would be just to sort of uh, have a really 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 good gig you know sometimes when you're actually playing a gig and it all gels together and everything sounds really really brilliant the audience are just standing there and then there's other times where you play badly and then the audience are really, really liking it. And you're thinking, I'd like them to align a little bit more often. But I prefer when we actually all play well and I don't give two hoots about the audience, but it'd be nice for, for everybody, you know, to have a really, really great gig. That's my wildest dream. We do some bigger gigs, you know, gigs where, you know, lots of people there jumping around, dancing, having fun. But also I like to be dramatic with the band as well. I like to sort of, I'd love to sort of, uh, I think with Salt we kind of do like to try and scare people as much as kind of uh, draw them in, be a kind of bit more emotive, especially Sharon with her lyrics and things like that. Our drama thought I was so old, I uh, just didn't even look old, I looked like dust. So we were thinking that as a name, so I think it looked funny, but then I thought so it was better. Still a bit dusty, but a bit great here. I should have guessed, but now I guess I know for sure. Your hurt and stir, it makes me kind of nervous to know. You want to walk the highway with me, the losers don't get years back my dad showed me some videos of The Who because he's a massive Who fan. I saw Keith playing as insanely as he always did and I just took to him and I thought, hmm, I play a wee bit of drums. Jesus, I want to play like that! Even just like how energetic and generous he could be, it's like, he seemed like a really decent guy, at least uh, superficially, so I just thought I'd take influences from that, the bits that I liked about him left out the bits that I didn't took influences from other drummers and just people in general, so that's just that's just the way I am. I'm better with it these days, I'm more controlled now, but back in the early days of Salt, even in like ballads, I mean we've got one song called Kicking Back the Guilt that's sort of a a nice wee mellow pop kind of song and there's a couple of massive fills that I used to incorporate in there that were just completely inspired by Keith. And maybe it was too much, but maybe it added a sense of energy. I, I don't know. I actually thought I had kind of written love songs, and then my oldest uh, child came up and said, Why are your songs always so dark? Why can't you write a happy song? And I said, Well, I have written happy songs. And then she went through all the songs, and every single one of them wasn't happy because of certain words in it. And then we've got Gallows, which has the most deaths in it. It's got three deaths in it. 
band's coming up just nice and really gritty again. They seem really punk. Uh, we've had sort of waves of just absolute fucking boredom, but at the moment there are some absolutely amazing bands, young bands, out there. You've got the wrong man and I'll tell you who it is. He sleeps beside me and you your process like um, writing music with with the band where does the inspiration come from where does the melody come from um, and how is it like uh, interacting with the other members in creating a song as a piece of art well sometimes sometimes like uh, it just comes out of kind of like a, a riff I think one time Simon was just playing the bass line and I know it was these Doing that sort of it's a minor chord over that and I'll just do something and then it all just come together and then it just becomes a big jam and then it becomes a, a big kind of um, melting pot of ideas and what you can actually do with it. It's, it's really, really, it's, that, that's what I kind of uh, enjoy doing. I think that our best songs are the ones that just come out of nothing. Jamie's the drummer, he's really good at composing and he's, he's always coming up with jazz chords and things like that and I'm always trying to simplify them and try to make them kind of more, more work and, and like and come from that angle as well. So I, I enjoy sort of taking somebody else's riff and putting my own slant on it and being, being, you know. And obviously Sharon does all the singing and like does all the melody, you know, so all our songs come out not what we actually think they're gonna sound like. I can't get away from Kitsch. I absolutely adore it. My conservatory is full of Cupid dolls and old 50s toys. It is my passion. When I grew up, we had no money and I was always dressed really, really badly and I got bullied to hell and back for that. I'm a very quiet and shy person, but I decided once I left school to shave my head and dress in vintage stuff in a scheming place or I don't uh, like a projects place where everybody had a really bad reaction to it. And I got hit a couple of times and I got a lot of abuse just because of what I was wearing. But it was weird, it was like I couldn't stop because it was me. So then I moved to Edinburgh which was a lot better. I had a lot less hassle. But I did still get some and I was hit again.
can't get away from pitch. I absolutely adore it. My conservatory is full of Cupid dolls and old 50s toys. It is my passion and when I was at art college, I everything I did was kitsch. It was all pinks and just strangeness, you know. Um, in the band, getting that kitsch across is more difficult. So what I do, because the guys don't know, is quite often I will try and put it across in the lyrics. I actually think we are kitsch as a band because we look so bloody awful in ways, in an ugly sense, that is actually good. And that, for me, ugly fashion has always been a passion of mine. And we definitely do not come across as a boy band or, or whatever, you know, we, we are pretty damn strange looking. When I see you in my dreams I hope that life's not what it seems You gave me everything and more And then you hurt me like before You said I was your favorite child Picked on your words I acted wild I know the game you play with me I keep the girl while you are free Would you hold me to me on the album is one that sounds just quite nice and it's called Kicking Back the Guilt and I've been a real coward in the fact that I won't actually say what this song is about I kind of just hope people will get what it's about but for the first time ever I'm, um, I'm gonna come out the song is about child abuse and even though at the end of the song it seems like it's still going on, there, there is an intensity there to get away from that, to not put up with that. And so that song, um, it, it breaks my heart, even singing it live, it breaks my heart. It's about my father. It's about my father and me. And I am bloody sure there's a lot of other people that have gone through this. And like I say, this is the hardest thing I've ever said. I have never, ever, ever mentioned this before. But that is what the song is about. Hi, my name is Simon. I'm the bass player in Salt. 
Being in SALT is a mixture of many ideas and viewpoints. Some good, some bad, and some ugly. It's fun versus frustration. But we do it because we love it. The music scene in Edinburgh is tough for local bands playing original material. There are only a handful of venues catering for bands like SALT. Hopefully they will all survive the present situation. I don't have any specific musical influences. Certain genres of music I like. Some I don't, and some I just don't get. Uh, I'm Paddy Kavanagh and I'm one of the owners from Leith Depot, which is a bar and music venue in Leith, in Edinburgh. Uh, we're going into our fifth year um, and basically we're just a grassroots music venue with a capacity of 65 um, and just trying to support the local art scene. Yeah, I've seen Saul playing here numerous times. Um, really good vibe, really good turnout for their gigs. Um, quite a unique sound. Yeah, pre-COVID, we were kind of really busy and there was a lot, there was a lot of, there was a lot of venues getting together, um, Sneaky Pete's ourselves and kind of starting to put on shows and it, it kind of getting more of a community kind of feel for Edinburgh music scene um, because it's almost like Edinburgh is second pace to Glasgow because there's so much music venues there um, and we just used to have like like the range that we do here um, it's all genres like grindcore it basically puts the night in the hands of the artist to do what they want to do um, on the night so we don't really book the bands the bands get in touch and say they want to do this they want to do that it's, it's totally fine so it gives them the room for the night to do what they need to do you into music in the first place did you come from a family of musicians or were you did you did you find music on your own I found music on my own my dad got me an amplifier and I bought a guitar off my friend for 15 pounds and it was homemade it, it was kind of looked like it was made with knitting needles or something like that it was ridiculous but I was just only interested in making a noise I remember that time my brother was playing a lot of Bauhaus and I was thinking I could do that. I remember 1981, 82. Just lots of noise and distortion on the on the guitar. How old would you have been? 14, 15, 15, 16. So that's really when you were interested in in all music, or just making music. That was when I was interested in in making music uh, because I, I always remember when I was, I suppose, in the early days of my first band, which we were just a bit, pretty much a noisy kind of band. My dad actually said to me, I mean, it's sadly no longer with us, he said. Uh, the music's got no rhythm. And I says, all right, okay, yeah. It's got no tunes either. And I says, all right, well, so what does it have? And he says, well, I think that's my point. <laughs> the voice that calls within Disturbs my sleep again Rising round my head Never making sense For heaven's sake Disturb my sleeper 
to write an actual love song. I can write love from my heart to a certain person or something like that, but I always bring in what is about that person, which is quite often something quite personal and, and maybe quite tense. So when it's about me, it's exactly the same thing. I just bring up things from my childhood and stuff like that. And a lot of it isn't very happy. But one day, and I've said it to Jamie, we, me and Jamie uh, work together very closely. He, he writes a lot of the melodies and I work on top of that. He's a bit like me though, and he goes down sort of uh, E minors, uh, everything's pretty awful route. But one day I would actually quite like to write a sort of I love you type song. A blue eyed boy, your sugar lips feel bitter now. Shadows fall, I can see my way around this. I need to fly, I need to see. What would you say to a, a young person? or someone just, or you, not even a young person, anyone who at any point in their life wants to start creating music, um, maybe doesn't have an idea how, um, maybe starting off just like you did, what would you say to that person? Um, I, I would just say just try and be original, do, do, do something from the heart, do something what you actually believe in, uh, don't try and copy, don't try and just try and do your own thing. I'd like to think that we, we do that, but I think sometimes there's always influences that come out. But when you're in a band, like you've got say four or five different people, you've all got different influences, you all put your different slant on it, you know. So it always comes out of the, the melting pot totally different from what you first envisaged. So I just say, be yourself. Uh, and obviously just have fun, just have fun, you know. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not adverse to learning more about music and things like that. I mean, I learn, I'm learning all the time. I think that's the one thing I'd always say is like, uh, you're never going to get to a certain level. You don't have to learn anymore. I'm, I'm just learning all the time, whether it's just about different styles or different recording techniques. There's, there's always scope. You wish me well. When we find a compromise that we can settle on, that's when we know that we've got a good song nailed down and that's when it starts sounding natural and then from there when we've got something established we can work further with it in the future. I think all songs that we write shape and change throughout their time. My real ambition, unless I want to go on stage with a Zimmer frame, is to get our music on film or on anything because the one thing I do know is the songs that we're actually coming up with are absolutely fucking brilliant and you know if people don't like the look of me because of my age or of Simon because he's not trendy or whatever which is the case in a, a lot of the music industry I know our tunes are good and I just want anybody to pick them up and do something with them and get recognition. Why should people buy this record? Well, our songwriting, the crafting of the music is really organic and is really, really, really good. There's no things like boy bands or anything like that. These are our songs. We write these songs and they're bloody good songs.
Now I just want to give a huge thanks to Dylan Mars Greenberg, who produced our documentary from New York, with us obviously being in Edinburgh, and what she did was beyond our expectations. Also, got to give a thanks to the cutest alien in the universe, Glitter Macabre. Now, I am so bloody pleased to introduce Dylan's band, Theophobia. I absolutely love them and I hope you do too. Theophobia. Dad was a tad insane. I knew him for years but he never remembered my name. He'd fall Tell him count to ten count to Keep on counting But he's never getting back up again You Broke the law We agreed on your silence But all you ever do is talk Son You're getting back to end Well you'll be up a parole watch.
said, are you okay? And you said, what did I just say? I tried to say you were right, but you had faded away You left a note with a I'm Dylan Mars Greenberg and I'm here in the middle of the beautiful American woods and live from Banana Row Studios in Edinburgh. It's salt. That's your face. I've seen it now.
Taking Back the Guilt. When I see you in my dreams I hope that life's no what it seems I love you everywhere and more But still you hurt me like before You said I was your favorite child Looked on your words, I acted wise I know the game you play with me I take the guilt while you walk free Would you hold me? Oh 